Hey everyone, welcome to part one of a two-part series on India's first empires. The, this information is also found in lesson 7.3 in your textbook. So today we are going to be discussing the Maurya Empire. And tomorrow in part two, we are going to discuss the Gupta Empire. So let's talk about who built India's first empire. So the Maurya Empire began in Magadha, which was a northern kingdom of India. Now you need to know at this time, India consisted of several small kingdoms. It was not one united country. It wasn't one united kingdom. It was several small kingdoms. And Magadha was a northern kingdom of India. And some of India, specifically the northern part of India, were weakened by a man named Alexander the Great, which we'll talk about next year in seventh grade. So, a ruler named Chandragupta Maria took advantage of it, and he invaded the weakened northern kingdoms of India, and he conquered them. And he eventually conquered much of the subcontinent of India and uniting it under one single empire. And we'll look at a map in a moment. But Chandragupta is credited for uniting all these small kingdoms into one single empire that spanned the entire subcontinent. So, he created a dynasty, and I believe we've already discussed what a dynasty is, but a dynasty is a series of rulers from the same family. So, he began the Marian dynasty. And so, how did he rule? Well, Chandragupta had a centralized government at the capital. And a centralized government means that everything came from the capital. That's where the, gov the center of government was. And he had local rulers in different areas, kind of as supervisors who reported to him. So everything, every decision made from government came from Chantragupta. But he also had these local rulers in place as a, as a, a way of being more organized and centralized. Chantragupta also had a strong army to keep order. So he had a very strong and large army to keep order throughout his expanded empire. He also created a postal system to improve the communication throughout the large empire so you could communicate across the large empire when needed, especially these ro local rulers to the capital. And he also had a good spy system. And he wanted to learn what people did. That was his way of trying to figure out if somebody was trying, if a group was trying to rebel against his rule. So he had a, so Chandragupta Maria had a centralized government at the capital, a strong army. He created a postal system, and he had a good spy system. Now, because it's a dynasty, when he died, um, it was passed down through his family and credited. At, and so, first, let's look before we go into the next ruler. 
Here is the Maria Empire is in the purple. The Mag Magda Magda um, Kingdom is the red. So that's where he began. That was his initial kingdom, Chantragupta. And he eventually expanded through conquest the entire sub almost the entire subcontinent as you can see based on the map so credited as the greatest king of the maria empire is a man by the name of asoku or asoka I should say Ahsoka. And Ahsoka is the grandson of Chan Chandragupta. Remember dynasty. Ruthless to Buddhist. Ahsoka was a ruthless military leader. Just like many kings and just like his grandfather. He was ruthless. Um, he would go into neighboring kingdoms and just destroy everything and everyone to conquer it and then one day he went into a neighboring kingdom and according to reports him and his soldiers killed or wounded over 100,000 people and he saw the the blood and the and the death around him and he was her uh, he was horrified at it and he had a change of thought and a change of perspective on life and he vowed to dedicate his life to the buddhist practices and so he went from having an empire where peace was through fear because people feared him that's what created peace now ahsoka ruled and created peace through law and so he came up with um a list of policies that he he posted, for lack of a better term, across the empire. So he carved these policies into rocks or pillars in, as we have found, 30 different locations and in different languages. And so there's a pillar, an example, at the top of the page. And so some of these policies included that he and advised people to be kind and truthful to others again these are going to be found in the teachings of buddha so he advised people to be kind and truthful to others he also advised people not to kill living things people or animals and one of his policies was that he eliminated the consumption or the eating of meat by the people closest to him the government officials his his royal court was not allowed to eat meat to avoid the killing of living things so think about that he went from seeing a hundred thousand people dead because of his leadership to now nothing can be killed including animals Ahsoka also sent missionaries to spread Buddhism. He built shrines and stupas across the empire as well. Uh, these missionaries went out and they taught. They were teachers of, of Buddhism. And they went throughout India and the rest of Asia. So they carried these beliefs beyond the empire. And the one thing that was unique about his rule 
was that he let people worship other religions freely. So they were allowed to worship Hinduism if they chose to. He allowed that. Now, him and his government officials, they put their Buddhist teachings into action. And so they did a lot of good during his rule. So what he did is, because he was focused really on the welfare of others, the betterment of others. So he planted trees, he dug wells, he set up hospitals for people and animals. He built rest houses along the main roads for people to stay in as they traveled. He also made it safe for travel, so safe tra travel conditions. So during Ahsoka's reign, India became the center of the huge trade system that stretched the entire Mediterranean Sea because the, they could use this empire, they could go through that. The traders had access to India because of the peace created during Ahsoka's reign. Now, the Maurya Empire, like all empires, decline. And so after Ahsoka's, Ahsoka's death, um, there was poor leadership, poor decision making, and invasions by other people. I mean, these kings made very bad decisions where they, f they forced merchants to pay high taxes. They took crops away from the farmers and the peasants. And it got so bad that the last, uh, the last ruler of the Maurya Empire was killed by his own general. It got that bad. Okay. So here is... Um, part one of India's first empires. Now you can move on to your next assignment.